Good morning, Tony Dottino. Doing my life with Tony from Larchmont, New York. I'm up here for a couple of weeks, uh, tending to some things that I need to be in the New York area for, and uh, hoping to find a little bit of time to go out and do some fun. But uh, I started a series yesterday from the current issue of Mind, Mood, and Memory magazine, or our newsletter, I should say. And it is the August 2023 issue. And I thought they did a great job of breaking down how socializing with your friends and family and others boost memory and enhance your mental health. And interacting with a variety of people stimulates the brain in a number of really important ways, of which memory and mental fitness would be one that you wouldn't stop to think about how important it is for us to be engaged in at least in making some connection or having a relationship or having friends that we can talk to or even people that are just walking by, walking a dog or going into a grocery store and saying hello and taking a minute to pause and talk to a cashier if there's not a line of people behind you. Uh, it's amazing what you can learn uh, and how you can go about doing that. And the question becomes, well, how do you do that? So I was in a waiting room yesterday, and I said, you know, I'm thinking about these socialization broadcasts and things, and I'm sitting there, and I was reading the newspaper, and I watched this young woman sitting over in a chair uh, about 10 feet away from me. And she has got this big book out, and she's just making notes, and she's going through it, and she's like really intense and studying for it. And I just said, you know, don't know this woman, but you know I, I'm just fascinated by what she's doing. So I got up from my seat and I walked over. Fortunately, there was a seat next to her, and I sat down with her and I said, "Excuse me, but may I just ask you a, a couple of questions?" As I'm observing you being so intense, I mean, you just look like you're so engrossed, and I'd love to know what you're so engrossed about. And she shares it with me. She's studying for a a social worker exam, and I just found that fascinating in that here she was uh, in a waiting room uh, in a hospital, and uh, she was uh, studying through this book and lining notes and going through different pages and uh, telling me, yeah, I did, took the exam once before and I missed by five points, and I need to take it again because I really would love to be a social worker. I have a passion to make a difference in people's lives, and I would just love to be able to, to be a social worker. So the next thing I asked her, I said, may I take a quick glance at this book? And so I looked at the cover, and it's preparing her for this uh, test that she's got to get for is what the title is, but preparing for your exam to social worker. And I started flipping through the agenda, and my goodness, it is as comprehensive. I mean, I think she needs to, to know about everything there is to ever know about people, which I found interesting. Uh, but it's all of the importances of social, being a social worker and helping people engage and make connection and be the best that they can be of themselves. And so I found it fascinating here. I'm like thinking I'm in a series of how to be socializing and I went over and learned all of this information in a 10 minute conversation about a social worker who's working hard to pass an exam because she wants to be able to go out and help people. And she was absolutely a, a, a pleasant uh, person, of just a gorgeous smile, and I wished her good luck, and I went back over to where I was sitting and uh, continued to read my New York Post. Now, the question for today, are big gatherings more or less helpful than intimate get-togethers or brief interactions? Well, I just shared with you what a brief interaction was, so I'll give you my perspective and it left me talking with her in a very pleasant mo mode it kind of broke up some of the tension of waiting uh, in a hospital room and just gave me a, as I'm talking to you now a very pleasant memory of a really com pleasant conversation and I kind of wish I could uh, have gotten her phone number to go back and talk to her more about how she's preparing and maybe offer her some to help that we do with obviously memory and uh, the work we do with reading comprehension and mind maps but uh, didn't think to go that far, and it was, it was fine for that particular point in time. But let's get back to big gatherings more or less. 
And here's what's important about gatherings. I've learned years ago in doing work on creativity that when I was working inside organizations or groups of people and trying to stimulate their creativity, I needed to bring people into teams of four or five, maximum six people. And I found that with a group of four or five, there was a very active exchange of information. And it was great, we we'll call the word teamwork. Today I'll call it socializing. But there was excellent teamwork amongst the group of four or five people because everyone felt that they first had to contribute. Everyone then felt that they were learning something from the other people. And it was a, a just a very vibrant, uh, energized group of people working to solve an organization's problem of some sort that would make them more efficient and more uh, customer or more client friendly. And so I learned in those days that stimulating people in groups of four to five where each person is contributing, and each person is, is gaining some value, each person is gaining some value was absolutely fabulous. And it reminds me when I think about socializing, you want each person in a group whether you're socializing with three people or two people, you want it to be, have an exchange of information. You want, you want to share something about yourself, but you'd also like to learn something about the person that you're speaking with. And so when they talk here in this article, uh, are their big gatherings more or less helpful than intimate? What I found when I put teams of people together, more than six, people would break up and almost create their own little clusters of four and three. Now, big gatherings, you go to a wedding, you go to a celebration of some sort, you go to a party, and there may be 50 people, there may be 200 people. I don't expect people to walk around and celebrate and talk to 200 people and engage in conversation with 200. But first of all, in most of these celebrations, you're surrounded with a group of eight to 10 people that are sitting around, a, a, usually a round table with glasses and drinks and things. And one of the things you can do is just start a conversation with someone that it's very, very basic and simple, which might start with, well, what brings you to this gathering? Are you friends of somebody here? Are you connected in some relationship on a business front? And so they're just, what, what brings you here? And what's your purpose? Is there something that you're hoping to learn or gain? Or, I mean, there's a whole, where do you live? Where do you come from? Hey, I live there too. I mean, it, there's such a diversity of what you can find and what you can learn. But the important thing is in any group is you want there to be a give and take. I don't think any of us would really enjoy sitting at a table of five people and having one person dominate the whole conversation unless they were a teacher and we were there to be students. But if we're in a social environment where we want to have a give and take, then obviously each of us has got something to offer. We all have some life experience that we would love and welcome the opportunity and the chance to be able to share with people. And so to that degree, what's important is that there's a give and, a give and take. So let me go on. When we think about the benefits of social engagement, we want to emphasize that there's quality over quantity. So having 10 people that one dominates or two dominates, is not the quantity or the quality that we would look to have. We may want to emphasize the quality over the quantity, which is interactions that are mutually giving and receiving, where one may be both giving and receiving, or when all parties, my team, are contributing and are meaningful for building a sense of purpose or a sense of community and connection. So there's a broad range of objectives that you can have and we cannot entirely discount the importance of short-term uh, socializing that be, be, may be superficial, but it may have a benefit of stimulating and creating positive cognitive health benefits, one being memory and one being the ability to communicate. So what I share with people is it's not the, the, the numbers, it's build a skill, first build a skill of how do you begin to question people in a dialogue that's safe, friendly, enjoyable, right? The goal here is enjoyable, not to antagonize, and therefore we'll come back on my next broadcast about and then, well, what are the kinds of people and what are the types of conversations you'd like to have. But uh, remember, our brain is always looking to learn. So if we're in any kind of a social activity, we're learning something interesting, 
a social worker taking a test that looks like it covers every possible variation that you can have in human interactions, then it, it, it's always the ability that when we learn something new, it's fun and we engage in that. And it's something that we walk away with and have some good memories. Now, the cognitive benefits, learning something new, we're, we're, we're wired to be connected with others, have mental benefits that impact your memory and cognitive fitness. And so why not have a goal today to go out and meet someone, have some conversation with them. And maybe that conversation can be on a phone or maybe the conversation can be somebody you've met a little, little while ago. But the important is to be engaged, to have your opportunity to share something with someone and to learn something back and see where that takes you. I am going to continue this. Uh, I don't know how many parts I will do with this. This has been such a fantastic article in breaking down the importance of social interaction that I've decided to just take each of the questions that were posed here in the Mind, Mood, and Memory by the Massachusetts uh, General uh, and break them into separate sections because I think they each deserve their own section of a live with Tony. So on Friday, we will take the next question and go back and give you perspectives and answers and hopefully by the time I'm done with the series uh, from my mood and memory you'll have a grasp on maybe one thing that you can grasp from it that you can bring into your life that can make a difference. Have a good rest of your week. We're at the midpoint. Uh, I've been trying to do my live with Tony's more now more in the morning uh, because I find my afternoons uh, just dissipate on me and I, it's 5 or 6 o'clock before I know what comes at me. So have a good morning and have a good rest of your Wednesday and we'll see you on Friday.